Normally, Sir Mark, of course, we would start with going straight to the calls, but we can't in light of the extraordinary events uh, yesterday and the bravery shown by your officers. Obviously, there's many details that you cannot share with us at this stage. What can you tell us, Sir Mark? That was horrific, wasn't it? And, and the, the first thing you have to say is <coughs> for the parents involved who've lost their 14-year-old, um, that is just horrific and it's everyone's worst nightmare. I'm sure we're all thinking about them. Um, so we were on the ground in 12 minutes and um, he was detained after 22 minutes. Obviously, some of the first contacts led to officers being very severely injured. What can you tell us about the extent of the yeah. injury, Samar? I mean, we talk, don't we? People say sort of officers run towards danger. What you've actually seen on some of the videos that are out sort of around social media and on news sites such as your own, you actually see what that really looks like. You've got officers running towards someone who's, wear, who's, who's waving a sword. Um, I went to the hospital yesterday and to see the officers and their families... Um, I saw the inspector whose hand's badly damaged. Um, I saw him before the operation. He was in good spirits. I think that was partly the morphine, to be honest. Right, OK. Um, but he's got sort of a lot of patching up to be done on his hand, um, really serious injuries there. And I was talking to the um, family and colleagues of the um, uh, of the officer, woman officer who's really badly damaged arm, really seriously damaged, and the, the surgeon spent sort of many, many hours sort of basically putting her arm back together. It's one going to take, be a long said, journey of recovery. One newspaper said of the female officer, it was close to her actually losing her hand. Are you able to confirm that? That's not a million miles away. I mean, it's, it's really horrifically serious injuries. I, I was in hospital three weeks ago with another officer who'd been stabbed. I, I find sort of going and seeing these these young men and women, they are mostly in their 20s, mm. um, they're the same age as my kids, and they're going out doing the most extraordinary things. I find it massively humbling that they are, they're so connected to the mission of protecting the public. Yeah. What they do is absolutely extraordinary, and it's a privilege to, to work with them and lead them. We'll move on in a second. Will these injuries be described as life-changing? So, based on what the surgeon was saying yesterday, we're sort of increasingly optimistic that with sort of months and years and lots of physio that sort of full recovery might be, may be possible. Well, it's too early to say that, but sort of... But uh, this is the female officer who's... Yeah, a, a more, yeah. I mean, they're both serious, but, but more but it's, serious. It's too early to be certain about that, but the sort of the, the, the surgeon was um, just the most professional and sort of um, humble guy, and um, he was sort of... So they reckon he was they pleased with how effectively he's gone. join all That's the nerves. Re and... repair, lots of repair work. It's extraordinary what they do. So I think he spent hours and hours sort of operating under microscopes, sort of reattaching nerves and vessels and things. Just extraordinary. Come on, I've uh, got to get a word from you on the bravery of the men and women who work for you. I say they're just extraordinary. I find it humbling. that sort of, They will run towards danger. But that's not a glib phrase. That's real. They're charging towards somebody with a charging towards somebody with a sword. They're putting themselves at risk because they are so connected to the idea of it's their job to protect the public, and um, they do that sort of day in and day out. I mean, meanwhile, every day in London, on average, nineteen officers are injured. Nineteen officers a day, um, seven days a week, three hundred sixty-five days a year. Um, that's the sort of that's the background of the conflict of officers making arrests at domestics on the streets when they confront violent people. That's the routine, and tragically, from time to time, some of those injuries are really serious, like yeah. we saw yesterday. The, these two officers were speaking of. Did they have tasers? Yeah. Uh, so, some of the officers involved did. I can't. I'm, I'm not sure whether those two. The, the two the, that the two. sustained serious injuries. Did they have tasers? I can't remember. Sorry, I'm not going. I'm not going to make up the facts. But so some of the ta some officers who you saw on some of the video detaining did did have tasers. So. All officers have the um, incapacitant spray and some officers are taser trained and we're currently reviewing whether we should have wider access to tasers for officers. Um, but neither of them are perfect solutions. No. Sometimes people in mental health crisis, particularly the, um, the incapacitant sprays don't work. The incapacitant sprays are difficult in a confined environment because everyone gets a dose of it and the tasers... You've got to have two barbs make contact with the skin. So neither of them are perfect, but we are looking at whether we issue them more widely. The numbers I have are you currently have a strength of personnel of around 34,000, of whom around 7,500 are taser-trained, carrying tasers. The mayor said in 2022, in his view, it should move more to like 10,000, and that is an active uh, uh, operation. Are those the figures you recognise, Samar? I, I do, I do recognise those figures. I, uh, so... You wouldn't expect it to be anywhere near 34,000 no. because I, 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 sort of, I know our counter terrorism detectives, for example, aren't going out confronting dangerous people on a sort of daily basis. But um, for some officers, it makes sense. The officers who are out on patrol responding to difficult calls on the streets, um, some of them have it. We're looking at whether more of them need it. Do we need more officers with guns on the streets? Uh, these incidents always, always provoke um, that thought. I, 
Uh, our armed policing teams are massively important at confronting some of the most dangerous. Um, I'm not someone who's um, I'm not someone who's a fan of the idea of moving towards sort of fully armed policing. I think it, we should be proud of our model that um, we police the streets and we keep them safe with a largely unarmed model. And I think that's something to be envied and protected. Lastly, on this, you'd want a higher ratio, wouldn't you, than roughly one in three officers carrying a taser? As the, the way the streets are going for their own protection? Um, so even was, if you've got to 10,000 out of 34, it's not even uh, one in three, Sir Mark. But it's, it's the patrol officers. It's, sort of, it's the patrol officers okay. it matters rather than the total number. So if you're, if you're doing sort of um, I know, fraud investigations no. or cyber work, you don't need a taser. But we are looking at the numbers and they may well go up. All right. Uh, and lastly, on the incident in Hainault, it's being reported that the man in detention has some kind of family link in that area. Can you comment on that, Commissioner? No. So, um, obviously, the investigation continues. He's in custody. The detectives will be interviewing him, and, and um, we'll see where that case Is there goes. anything more you can say about that? I'm not going to say any more about the investigation, no. It's live investigation. Mohammed's in Stratford, and I've got a note here that you know the boy who was attacked yesterday. Is that correct, Mohammed? Good morning, Nick. Yeah. Firstly, I will give my condolences to the young chap's family. Yeah, and commend the bravery of the officers that attended... And, and the public that tried helping yeah. um, on the scene have been injured. Um, young chap was completely at the wrong place at the wrong time, just going to school, on a normal day going to school. Yeah. Didn't turn up at school. He sits next door, next to my son oh my goodness. at school. Um, and they were wondering that, the, I'm not going to mention his name because I, I don't think you would name, didn't. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, that he hadn't turned up and they texted him. But then later in the day, a couple of the kids said, "Oh, he hasn't opened his message yet today," and it's not. It's very unlike him because they're, they're very communicative. So, um, yeah, reality hit later on in the day that we 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 found out. Um, so, it, definitely a tragedy. Stop and search needs to be increased. Stop and search. We sh- we we should have these little. Um, and I think with with the with the mayor saying that you know there should be another three four thousand more tasers in London. And I think that's a minimum, maybe more, probably, you know, one in two officers should be taser um, equipped uh, and that would help in these situations. But also we should have gangs of officers that, a team of officers, maybe, I don't know, 20 gangs or something of officers that go around in vans. And to make this better, I think, I remember back in the days there used to be independent custody visitors, and I don't know if that role kind of still exists. Yes. And maybe an independent custody visitor could be part of the stop and search process that can be a bit more independent and show and, and give faith in the community these searches have been carried out um, fairly. But these searches should be done early in the morning from 7 till 8.30, 9 o'clock, and they should be done by between 3 and you know, seven, eight o'clock in the evening, but, where Mohammed, there are school kids. Yeah, Mohammed, as the father of a lad, obviously the same age as this poor yeah. fellow, how nervous are you when your son goes out, perhaps in the evening to meet with friends or on the weekends? We we have this constant argument. It's just like, Dad, I, I want to go to school by bus or train. I said, no, I'm sorry, I'm going to drop you off. And I leave, you know, at the middle of the day, just go pick him up and so on and so forth. Yeah. And... It's, I've had a, you know, we've had this chat with... And he'll hate that because he doesn't want his mates seeing him being driven to school by daddy. That's all. I mean, a lot of the kids are yeah, being of dropped off by mummy and daddy. And okay. it's, you know, and the, but there are a lot of kids that come on the bus. And I, and for me, safety on public transport. Um, and they had, um, they, you know, they had some in from TfL and the police last week in general, just having a chat. Yeah. Talking to the kids about the safety on trains and how safe they are compared to... Well, I think the BTP have done a really good job but it's very different on the buses. There's a lot more buses than trains, I think. And it's much harder for the buses to be policed. Um, and Lastly, I know you don't and you won't identify the lad. Did your son ever tell you much about the boy? Were they quite friendly or they just happened to sit? Oh, yeah, yeah, they're really friendly. He was a friendly young chap. I've, I've seen him many times myself. Right. Um, yeah, really young, friendly chap. Um, was he a sportsman? Did he play for any of the school teams or anything like he that? He did. He did. He was in the rugby team. I'd seen him on rugby. Right. Uh, he, you know, um, he'd, he, he's got siblings. God. It's sad. He's unfortunate. It's, you know, I think for the kids that suffered the tragedy less than a year ago already, 
Yes. Um, I'm not going to say much more than that. No, OK. This um, is, of course, Grace Somali Kumar. And I won't identify the school, but I do know the school. It's a, And I won't name the school. It's a sensational yeah, so, school your kids goes to. Yeah, it, yeah, it's a yeah. belting school, I have to tell you. I, so, I, I you know, know. It's, it's less than a year ago. And there were, you know, there, there was yeah, some stuff that was cancelled at schools and, you know, some stuff that we were working on at the time. And there was, a, there was supposed to be another event this evening. And, yeah. yeah. All right, sir. Thank you for sharing so much. Oh.